Hi, I'm Thanos. Today we will travel to New Eden and live our own odyssey. We will go to the heart of the city to investigate, collect clues and solve the crimes that plague the city. So, let's dive into the box and see what's hiding inside. New Eden is like a paradise on earth. A city mix of lights, innovations and glamour. The ungrateful would say that the cage is gilded and that no one can venture beyond the walls of the city where everything is sterile, abandoned, assaulted by centuries of pollution that are poisoning the planet. Fortunately, the center is serving our interests well. The center is our father, our creator, or even better, our administrator. He starts our vehicles, lights the slums of New Eden to its heights and defends us against foreign oppression. Center is also our mother, she's our media and our stores. She carries our values and is the glue of our community as the enemy seeks to deprive us of the abundance and prosperity within our walls. The Bridge 2121, my paradise, my beautiful ideas. Everything has been destroyed, a flood of terrible images. The perpetual war between androids in the outer wasteland, inviolable networks, all undermined by an insidious force. The enemy was within our walls. We knew that. However, I no longer want to believe what they want to sell me. Neither information nor consumption. Nothing can take away from me this haunting and hypnotic thought, this insoluble question. Are we controlling center or is it controlling us? Crimes. This is what I read in the news and blogs. Who is responsible for the crisis? Who are the murderers? Who corrupts and smears our paradise? They are muzzled, buried in the depths of the dark web, sued, accused of being Eastern Network spies. In the end, we are surrounded. The enemies want to interfere in our oasis of freedom, but who's pulling all the strings from the digital web? Organize and resist. That's it. We must fight back, fight this digital plague. You will only have to join me in this bar where we once met, under the sculpture of chains and neon lights, when you receive the signal. So, begin your cyber odyssey. New Eden is made up of five districts. These districts have slots where agents interact with the district. The orange slots are for taking actions, the red for tactical combat and the green allow agents to resolve certain events triggered by event cards. Each district has a unique deck of 8 cards that describe incidents and 4 special event cards that allow you to further explore the events described. Tokens are placed on the districts to show where the incidents take place. Generic event tokens and riot tokens are used to show where the agent must go and resolve the incident. Crime scene tokens allow agents with the investigation trait to solve the crime scene. Car chase tokens allow agents with a piloting feature to participate in a car chase to stop a fugitive. Forbidden tokens do not allow agents to occupy the action slot associated with this token. Character tokens allow agents to escort individuals from one place to another. And the bridge tokens allow agents possessing the piracy characteristic to take a hacking action on a location containing a bridge token. Each organization has one dashboard with slots to keep track of your progress in the game and store your clues, vehicles and investigation cards. Each organization can recruit up to three agents who carry out the investigations. They come with the agent file that has the features, skills and jobs listed on it. This agent file goes to the agent dashboard along with their equipment and experience. At the beginning of the game, each agent has two features that have special abilities and help resolve certain events. The agents can buy all sorts of equipment on the orange slots in the districts. Cyber implants, gears, clothes, healing kits, weapons and vehicles. Once purchased, the equipment tokens are placed on a free slot on the agent's dashboard and the vehicles are placed in a free transportation slot on the organization's dashboard. 
The strategy cards determine the order of play. The support cards represent new Eden citizens who are willing to help the organizations, but always for a price. The software cards provide with some bonuses and can be very helpful in different situations. The hacking cards are used to resolve the hacking action and the trip cards are drawn when the agents move to a district or during car chases. The trucks board includes the Chrono Truck, which represents the rise in the level of defense of the center AI against hacking and the number of hostiles to be added to its tactical combat. The Network and the Influence Truck consist of 9 squares that represent rewards for the players who place an organization token there. In Cyber Odyssey, each player controls a team of 1-3 to three agents in an organization that seeks to solve the crimes in New Eden in 12 days. Each day, an event card is revealed for each district which will describe the incidents taking place that day. Then players choose a strategy card with an initiative number that defines the turn order. During the activation phase, players have three actions available for the agents to investigate in the heart of the city and collect clue tokens that are stored in investigation folders on each organization's dashboard. The first player to resolve every investigation card of their organization immediately wins the game. Game turn. Each turn consists of the following phases. Event phase. Event cards in play have a maximum duration so they are turned sideways to indicate how long they will remain in play. Draw the top event card for each district and place the event tokens on the indicated locations. Take a number of clue tokens indicated on the cards still in play and place them next to the tactical combat location. Strategy phase. Each player draws a strategy card, then they choose one card and simultaneously reveal their strategy card. The player order is determined by the initiative values of the strategy cards. The player with the lowest initiative value will be the first player. Activation phase. Starting with the first player, players take turns activating one agent at a time. By going to specific areas of the districts, an agent can perform several types of actions. The agents can make purchases from six different stores and buy equipment that will help them upgrade their gear and move through the districts. By performing a recruitment action, new agents and supporters can join the team. An agent with the investigation feature can perform a digging in the archives action to attempt to retrieve clues. These clue tokens are stored in one of the empty slots of a folder on the player's organization dashboard and create combos that will give investigation points. The agents may go to a lobbying slot to place organization tokens on both influence and network tracks. The agents may move using a taxi or vehicle. Check the threat level of the district. A green threat level means that the district is safe. An orange or red threat level means that the district does not have a good reputation and requires you to draw a trip card and apply the effects. An agent with a pilot feature can perform a hacking action to attempt to retrieve clues. A hacking action takes place over several turns and is between the agent who tries the hacking action and the organization with the most tokens on the network track. To win a hacking action, the hacker must be able to counter each of the hacking cards played by the organization. The agents also have jobs that provide them with income and XP. And of course, all agents can have fun and gain XP. Finally, an agent with a weapon can perform a combat action. Each district has two tactical locations. Before the tactical combat phase begins, the agent may discard one support card to receive additional support from people who will now be considered as their teammates. Two types of combat can take place in a tactical location. Organization versus organization and organization versus hostiles. Place your agents, teammates and hostiles as instructed and let the combat begin. Each player draws three tactical and three combat cards. Check for any bonuses provided by software support cards or by gear tokens and assign tactical initiative cards face down for each of your agents. Then all cards are revealed simultaneously and both players play the actions indicated on the tactical cards beginning with the agent with the lowest initiative. The tactical cards have the initiative value, the actions that can be taken by the agents and their teammates and also show how many teammates can be activated after the agent has completed all of their actions. If the player chooses the attack action, then the attacker selects a target and plays a combat card face down. The defender may play a combat card in defense. To calculate the total attack and defense values, add the values of the cards played to the attack or defense values of the agents or teammates involved in the combat. The damage inflicted is the difference between the attack and defense value. When an agent takes damage, their health point counter goes down. 
If they lose their last health point, the agent is killed. Two of their gear may be assigned to other agents and all the rest tokens are discarded. Investigation phase. Each player records the values of the clue tokens stored in their completed files. When a case is complete, it is turned into investigation points. These investigation points are shown on the investigation point counter on the player's organization dashboard. Repair phase. In this phase, you can repair a fried cyber implant and heal agents using their healing kits. Each healing kit heals one health point of any of your agents. End of game. A player who has successfully resolved all their investigation cards immediately wins the game. If no player has resolved all of their investigation cards by the 12th turn, the player with the most investigation points wins the game. Well, this was our story of Cyber Odyssey. Until our next adventure, take care and remember, there is nothing more deceptive than the obvious fact. Mm -hmm.